Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be going over a problem two from week two of the Invariant Summer Puzzle Competition. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below to the Facebook page of the Invariant where you can find out more details about the competition. Anyway, this is a problem I have today and it's a combinatorics problem. We have 3,000 distinguishable marbles and we wish to sort them into three groups such that each marble is attached to exactly one group and the size of each group is a multiple of three. We want to know in how many ways can we do this. So another way of thinking about the setup of this problem is we have 3,000 distinguishable marbles and we have three hats and we want to place these marbles into the hats such that the number of marbles in each hat is a multiple of three. Now this may just seem like an ordinary combinatorics problem but I'll give you a little hint to the solution before I get into it is that the solution to this in fact involves complex numbers which I've never seen before used in a solution to a combinatorics problem so I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, with that hint, if you want to have a go at the problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into the solution. Okay, so the way we want to think about this problem is we have our 3,000 marbles, and we want to paint each one one of three colours, so either red, blue, or green. And then our question is, how many ways are there to colour the marbles, red, blue or green, such that there are a, a multiple of three number of red marbles, a multiple of three number of blue marbles, and a multiple of three number of green marbles. Okay, now before we get stuck into that, let's just notice that if we have, say, if we colour X red marbles, Y blue marbles, and Z green marbles, so that X plus Y plus Z is 3,000, so we have our 3,000 marbles and we're painting X of them red, Y of them blue, and Z of them green, the number of ways to do this is just 3,000 factorial divided by x factorial, y factorial, z factorial. Now if you've not seen this before, take a moment just to think about it. It's very similar to why, uh, how we kind of derive our n choose r formula. Anyway, what I want to do is just denote this guy here by 3,000 x, y, z, like so. So kind of a, a standard way to notate this guy here is like so. So essentially our problem is we want to know the number of ways to do this but when x, y, and z are multiples of 3. So we essentially want to know the sum of i plus j plus k equals 1000 of i, j, oopsie daisy, and k being bigger than or equal to 0 of 3000 choose 3i, three 3j, three 3k. Three oopsie daisy. So if we can compute this number here, this will give us the solution to our problem because this is telling us the number, of, you know, once we have 3i, three 3j, three and 3k, Think of that as, you know, colouring 3i of the marbles red, 3j of the marbles blue, and 3k of the marbles green. And the reason we have i plus j plus k equals 1000, is because then 3i plus 3j plus 3k equals 3000, so that's all the marbles. And of course we need i, j, k being bigger than or equal to zero, because we can't have, um, you know, negative two green marbles, for example. Okay, so once we compute this number here, this will give us the solution to our problem. But of, of course the challenging bit is computing this number here. Let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so what I've done is I've written up our goal number up here. It's the number we're trying to compute, and once we've computed that, that will solve our problem. Okay, now one thing I should have mentioned is if we just have a look at this, it, uh, this summation firstly involves a bunch of terms, but also the things we're summing up are kind of ugly. If we try to plug this into a computer and just get it to explicitly compute it, we've got a 3000 factorial here in the numerator, which is an extraordinarily large number so a computer won't be able to handle this and as we see once we get to the end once we find our solution the number itself is a very big number so I'm not sure if a computer could handle if you just plugged in this expression here so what we want to do is kind of find an equivalent summation which only involves a few terms which we can then just compute by hand and that's where complex numbers get in, uh, come into this but before we get into that let's introduce this function here f of x y which is just 1 plus x plus y raised to the power of 3000 now, if we just use our binomial expansion formula, this guy here is just the sum of i plus j plus k being equal to 3000 and i, j, k being non-negative of 3000, choose i, j, k, multiplied by x to the i times y to the j and then technically times 1 to the k as well, but of course 1 to the k is just 1. Okay, so f of x, y is equal to this guy here. Now, why is this important and how does this relate to complex numbers? Well, let me introduce the complex number we're going to be focusing on in this video, and it's omega, and it's just e to the 2i pi over 3. Oops, it's easy, like so. So, a cube root of unity. And now, why is this important? Well, I'm going to make a claim which allows us to compute this number here. So, let's call this number here c. And now, I claim 
that C, the number we want to compute, is just 1 9 times the sum from i equals 0 to 2 times the sum from j equals 0 to 2 of f of omega to the i times omega to the j, like so. Okay, so firstly, once I can prove this claim, which I'll do in just a moment, once I can prove this claim, we can see, well, we're just actually summing up only a few terms, so we can just do that by hand, and then we'll be able to get our answer. Anyway, let me clean up the whiteboard, and I'll prove this claim, and then we'll be able to get our answer. Okay, so I've brought the claim up to the top of the whiteboard, and we had a 9th on the right-hand side, so I've gotten rid of that by multiplying both sides by 9, and I've also gotten rid of the i's and j's and swapped them for l's and m's, because in the proof we'll be using i's and j's. So the claim is that 9c equals the sum from n equals 0 to 2 times the sum from m equals 0 to 2 of f of omega to the l omega to the m. Now the way we're going to prove this is starting from the right hand side and noticing that this is just, well, let's copy it out, the sum from n equals 0 to 2, the sum from m equals 0 to 2, but now f, remember from before we sort of derived slash just wrote down what this equals, this is just the sum of i plus j plus k equal to 3000 and i j k being greater than or equal to 0 of 3000 uh, choose i j k multiplied by x to the i times y to the k but in this case x is just omega to the l so you get omega to the l raised to the i and then y is omega to the k which we're raising to the j so we have our right hand side is just equal to this guy here but because we've got finite summations everywhere we can swap the order so i'm going to bring this summation up to the front so if I just rub these off, I'll write it again. So the sum from i plus j plus k equals 3,000, i, j, k being bigger than or equal to 0. The sum from l equals 0 to 2 times the sum from m equals 0 to 2 of this guy here. But now I claim that this guy here is 0 when i, and j, when i is not a multiple of 3 or j is not a multiple of 3, which means we only need to focus on the case where i and j are multiples of 3. Well, how do we prove that? Well, suppose i is not a multiple, multiple of 3. Well, then, let's have a look at this right-hand side here. Well, notice that omega l to the i does not depend on m, so I can bring it out of this first summation. So this guy here, which I'll just call s for now, s is equal to the sum from l equals 0 to 2 of, and if I bring up the omega l to the i, like so, m equals 0 to 2 of 3000 i j k multiplied by omega to the uh, k to the j, like so. But we don't really care about this summation here, we only want to focus on this thing here, and we're supposing i is not a multiple of 3, so that means omega to the l is a, 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 a sort of is always going to be 1 plus omega plus omega squared. No matter what L is, this guy here is always going to be 1 plus omega plus omega squared by how roots of unity work. But because omega is e to the 2i pi over 3, so the non-trivial root of unity, so not equal to 1, this guy here, in fact, just equals 0 because this thing here is just uh, omega cubed minus 1 over omega minus 1. The denominator is non-zero, and the numerator is zero, because omega cubed is one. Um, so this guy here obviously equals zero. So that means we've got this thing here equals zero, multiplied by this thing here, so that all in all, this is going to be zero. And that's when i is not a multiple of three. And we get the exact same thing, or a very similar thing, when j is not a multiple of three. This guy here is going to be equal to zero. We just bring this term out instead. So we only need to focus in the case when i and j are multiples of three. And remember, because i plus j plus k equals 3,000, and 3,000 is a multiple of 3, if i and j are a multiple of 3, then certainly k is a multiple of 3. So we only need to consider the case where i, j, and k are multiples of 3. Let me clean up the whiteboard, and I'll continue this proof. Okay, so we just showed that in this summation here, that i's, j's, and k's, we only need to focus on when they're multiples of 3, because when they're not multiples of 3, the, it's going to just be adding 0 to our summation. So we only need to focus when i, j, and k are multiples of 3, which means we can kind of write this slightly differently. So i plus j plus k, instead of equaling 3,000, equals 1,000 now, and change all the i's, j's, and k's to 3 i's, 3 j's, and 3 k's. Okay, so this i, j, k becomes 3 i, 3 j, 3 k. This i here becomes a 3 i, and this j here becomes a 3 j. Now what's really nice about this is now this omega to the l to the 3 i, I can just write as omega cubed to the l i, 
So omega cubed to the Li. But of course, because omega is a cube root of unity, then omega cubed is just one. And then one to the Li, of course, is just one. So this guy here is one. But similarly, uh, omega to the k to the 3j is also one. So we've got one times one. And that doesn't do anything to our summation. So we have this thing here. But now notice that we haven't actually got any L's or M's involved anywhere. So these guys here are just summing 1 from M equals 0 to 2. So this summation here corresponds to 3. And this summation here also corresponds to 3. So 3 times 3. So we can get rid of this. And we'll get a 9. But then of course just bringing the 9 out the front. And then noticing that this guy here, what's left, is exactly what our C is. We can see that this thing here is just 9C which is our left-hand side of our claim. And this, of course, proves our claim because the right-hand side equals the left-hand side. Okay, cool. So we've proved our claim in quite a neat manner. So now we notice that to get C using this guy here, we just have to compute nine, to, uh, sort of essentially do the sum of nine numbers by just plugging uh, omega into F. Which, and just remember F of XY equals one plus X plus Y to 3,000. So we can just plug in omega uh, into, into this, or the omega to the L, omega to the M, into this guy here, and just sum up the nine different terms here. Now using you know, a few tricks about symmetry and De Moivre's theorem and things like that, we can actually just compute the solution. We don't have to actually raise a number to the power of 3,000. However, I'm not going to add up these nine numbers for you because that would be a bit boring. I'm just going to copy out the answer onto the whiteboard. Okay, so our final answer is just C equals 3 to the power of 2998 plus... 2 times 3 to the power of 1499. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I've never seen combinatorics and complex numbers mixed together, so I thought this was a really cool problem with a really cool solution. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.